The season of the Drifter is upon us, likely primed to launch sometime in March. With that, there is somewhat of an expectation that the content drop will be based on or around Gambit. Now, Bungie has said that it won't be completely Gambit related, source in the description, but I would imagine a decent chunk of it will be. We're a few months and a couple of adjustments into Gambit being a part of Destiny, so I'd like to take some time today to discuss the state of Gambit in Destiny right now. When Gambit was a more curated experience at conventions and pre-forsaken capture events, it was fantastic. Everyone was on the same loadouts of limited weapons, armor, subclass options, and barely anybody knew any of the strategies of the game mode. Thus, things were good, and I thought Gambit would quickly become a staple of my Destiny experience. I will say that in a vacuum, Gambit is one of the best things added to Destiny in the history of the franchise. It's just when you take into account all of the other things that encompass Gambit, that's where we run into some problems. When Gambit first launched with Forsaken, and we had access to our own weapon and armor kits, the issues were noticed almost right away. For example, Sleeper Simulant was a menace, while an even worse problem, Queen Breakers, was still yet to even be unearthed. Boss insta-burn strategies were being developed, reducing the amount of risk a team took when engaging with the Primeval due to potential invasions. And finally, the catch-up mechanic allowed teams who were behind by significant amounts of moats to mount comebacks that probably shouldn't have been able to happen. Sleeper got an adjustment, Queen Breaker Ammo got an adjustment, the comeback mechanic got an adjustment, yet Gambit still has that stigma of, oh good, Gambit. And there are many reasons for that. One of these reasons is because of solo play. Solo queuing into Gambit tends to not be a fun experience. Other teammates are unpredictable. Sometimes you'll get a great team with a great invader or great PvE players. Other times you won't. Sometimes you'll queue into a four stack. I think part of what sours the Gambit solo experience as well is that it is very, very difficult to carry if you're at that level of good. It is hard to be both a PvE and PvP all-star at the same time in Gambit. You have to end up picking one or the other. There are roles to fill and there's only so much you can do as your role before limitations kick in. In regular PvP, the goal is to kill other people and get objectives, but you can do both of those at the same time and therefore can carry a team to victory. It's really hard to deliver moats and slay PvE mobs and invade and shred the primeval all with one set of gear and loadout all at the same time. And when you understand the game and the game mode at such a level and play with random players who don't, it can be infuriating but that goes for most things in general, not just Gambit. Another reason is that the meta of Gambit hasn't really shifted at all, so therefore tends to feel like the same gameplay experience no matter what you do. I don't know how much the experience was really supposed to shift, if at all, but I know if I roll with a four stack in Gambit, we are going to do basically the same exact thing every single time and win the overwhelming majority of our games. When grinding for Breakneck, I think my team lost three games out of the 40 we had to play, with those losses being heavy ammo influenced. That was also the last time that I played Gambit. Any sort of counterplay or changes to our gameplay rely on invasions, and how well ours go or how poorly the enemy teams go, and both of those tend to be reliant on power ammo. Some counterplay is also moat deposits and what kind of mobs you send to the other side while Phalanx only cost five and stick on the field much more obnoxiously. The invader role is pretty interesting because it can be either incredibly brutal and overpowered or futilely weak, depending on the team you play against and if you have access to power ammo. Power ammo is just so ridiculously strong and can be really difficult to fight back against. See, Queen Breaker, Sleeper, but now Thunderlord too. If you don't have your own power ammo to fight back, you are either going to get wiped or will be forced to sit back for 30 seconds doing nothing. Power ammo in general swings games really hard depending on if you get it to spawn or not, or if the other team gets some and you don't. 
The Taken Armaments mod from Last Wish can make it so your team ends up with significantly more power ammo than what was probably expected of in a typical game. In some games I played for this video, my team frequently had multiple people with way more heavy ammo than I ever remember us having without the mod equipped. There's not a ton of counterplay against power ammo either, snipers are really the only thing. Despite all of that, the invader role can feel completely helpless sometimes. With a coordinated team on certain maps, you can kill the invader as they teleport in because there are only three spawn locations per map. This is part of the primeval insta-burn strategy as well, which we'll discuss in a moment. The permanent wall hack an invader gets is also a huge point of contention with regards to the invader feeling unfairly strong sometimes. Linear fusions gain a lot with wall hack capabilities, plus with their aim assist allowing for very generous headshots, they were just pretty, pretty insane. I can't tell you how many times I've been killed by an invader before the voice line even finished. Snipers also gain a massive benefit, but hitting a sniper shot is a bit harder, even with wall hacks, so it's not as contentious. I've seen and suggested a pulsating wall hack effect every couple of seconds so that the wall hack isn't permanent, and I wonder how well that would work. Taking away the vision completely would create a situation where once the invader was found, they would just be instantly collapsed on, and it would be pretty difficult for them to make a play in general. You need to give the invader some tools to make plays happen. Just an overshield is not going to cut it. Removing vision would just exacerbate the hiding and spawn issue as well, creating more stalemates. People already tend to just sprint back to their spawn when an invader shows up, and while it's smart to do since you can do it, I've also seen a lot of feedback saying that you shouldn't be able to just run and hide and spawn when an invader is around. It's fine if you want to hide, but being able to retreat so far back, especially near teammates respawning, makes it so the invader has to run across the entire map, deep into the spawn, just to have a chance of an engagement, not even a kill. Again, the penalty for this is that the defending team can't do anything for 30 seconds, but the invader versus defender portion of gameplay comes to a complete standstill. Primeval boss melting has been almost, if not already, perfected at this point. Most teams will wait until their primeval spawns, kill one wizard and get another one low, wait for an invader, get them to leave via whatever means necessary, kill the other wizard, and just insta-give the primeval boss with supers and melting point. The delay on the wizard kills is so that the other team doesn't get free stacks of primeval slayer, although this effect has been reduced in the latest Gambit Balance update. You need as little as two stacks, two stacks! to burn the boss. Really good teams can make it happen in one stack of Primeval Slayer. While incredibly effective, the counterplay for this is basically zero and doesn't make for interesting games, even if you need to be somewhat coordinated to pull it off. It also de-incentivizes using supers during any other time during a match, which isn't really fun either. The Primeval Servitor has immune phases which stops people from insta-burning the boss, but the issue there is that if you don't have a lot of special or power ammo, and the other team does, well, it's just really hard to do damage with primary weapons, and then the game becomes more about who got ammo drops. I'm not saying that every boss should have immunity phases, as teams with low special or heavy ammo, like the team that's currently winning, for example, would run into significant damage problems, but... Instaburting the boss takes all of the boss versus boss final stretch tension away. Even if it is the smartest play to make because of the strength of invaders. Finally, three round games are just long. They are very long. Two games are fine, but three games might want to have some sort of accelerator on them. One round is too short though, but you can't end a series of two games if it's 1-1. All in all, while Gambit in a curated, vacuum-like environment is great, it's not in that environment, and there are quite a few issues to be sorted out before Season of the Drifter arrives, or as it arrives. Gambit needs to just be a bit more fun to engage with, otherwise I feel like this next content drop may have some issues with the player base if it does end up being Gambit heavy. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.